Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back. This is Patrick Riggins with the Patrick Riggins Show. Leading the charge down this path to liberalism, or liberalism, libertarianism. Whoa, man. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be something in my water. I'm fighting a little bit of a head cold. I don't know if you can hear that through the radio. And uh, I took some um, some decongestant, so that's what's doing that. That's uh, tripping me up a little. Holy cow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and what somebody would do is they'll take that clip that says Patrick's leading down the trail of liberalism and and just play that somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Anyway, <laughs> this week um I was uh tooling around the internet and saw um Fox News did a story about homeschooling and they were focusing on the uh, African American community, and and as any listener to this show knows, uh, we're we're pretty much behind that and behind turning um, all this uh, government-run schooling over to private education. And I think this story was interesting how it refutes some of the arguments against going to a private educational system in America. And first off, they had uh, now this is from Fox News. They had a quote from George Noblet. And he's a professor at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And here's what he had to say about the present education system. The current state of education is actually not one that's conducive to kids learning. More and more kids end up not being served well. So I think African Americans are positively saying it's time to find a better educational situation. So here is a professor admitting that the educational system in America is in bad need of repair. If you're looking to government to fix it, well, frankly, you're out of luck. They have no motivation to look inside their own institution and correct uh, the problems that are there. Just look at this last fight here locally in Knox County where the school system, well, they're acting just like some sort of beggar. No, no matter what you give them, they still want more. And one of the arguments against homeschooling is that Students will somehow miss out on being in a formal school situation and around other people who are seem well seemingly bent on ruining any chance at them getting a decent education. But here's what one of the uh, students had to say about that. The home school, nothing against public school, but I say, you know, you're not really missing out on anything. So here is a, a 16-year-old who has been homeschooled and for the past five years. His name's Kamal Hayes. And he doesn't miss being in a formal classroom one bit. So that social argument just does not hold water at all. Many great people have been educated home. And some even educated themselves without their parents' help. Not because their parents didn't care. It's because they were busy trying to make a living in hard times. But they still insisted that their children educate themselves they, so they would have it easier than their parents did. Along with homeschooling come many additional benefits, and this is described by Kamal's mother, or yeah, mother Kisha Hayes, in this clip right here. We're able to focus on Black history a little bit more than I think public school may give it. We're able to actually learn the things that we want to learn, whatever that might be, and I, I think that would go with any nationality. And this is where homeschooling excels. It provides an individualized education for a child that the public schools just don't have the time nor the research sources to give. And for those who would say that parents cannot be trusted to teach their own children, which is a lot of times the argument against this, here is another clip from the story. We had to make sure that we put the right things on the inside of him so at the end of the day, when it's time for him to go out and stand and be a man, he'll be able to affect and change society for good, you know, and not, not for bad. See, so the parents have a much more vested interest in making sure their children are educated well and, and ready to tackle what, what life has out there for them. By also taking this out of the government's purview, this would also stop 
all the yelling and screaming about things happening at school that one side of the political spectrum or another disagree with. Because this is a government-run system, it is subject to the political maneuverings of whatever is happening at the moment. A private school would not be blowing in the winds like this. It would have a defined set of principles that it would go by, and people sending their children would know them in advance. So if they did not agree with them, then they would not send their children to school there. So you may have a school that would teach creationism. You may have a school that teaches evolution. You may have a school that believes in and and promotes, or not promote, but I guess, I don't know if tolerate would be the right word, but they would they would uh, be inclusive of homosexuality and of course some people that send in their kids to a christian school that you know would not be the same goals of that school you c- literally could also have a school that takes a strict interpretation of the quran and on and on if we would just get government out of the education business we would have much better results grade wise and and much better efficiency money wise but Unfortunately, like many things the government is into, removing it is very, very hard. One reason is because a lot of people make a lot of money and derive a lot of benefits from working in a government-run institution. Another argument is that some parents won't make their children go to school, and they won't teach them at home. So we as a society are going to suffer. My response to that would be, well, right now... We are already making kids go to school, and way too many of them are not learning anything. If children don't want to learn, then they aren't going to put forth the effort to do it. You just cannot open up their heads and pour in the education. They have to want to learn. The big question is, how can you encourage them to desire an education enough to work to get one? Well, the fact is, kids are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. So the answer is to cut off this government-sponsored aid completely. When they look around, they realize if you don't have a job, then you're not going to have any money coming in. Then they realize that the only choice is to get an education, either through books and traditional or learning a trade. Either way, something of value for which they can earn money. It is when you make it easy to be poor that people will stay poor. And don't tell me they cannot help themselves. I think the last number I saw was that half the people in this country are receiving some type of government aid. I just refuse to believe that half the people in this country are so downtrodden they cannot make it with some type of government aid. Which, (laughs) it brings me to a real quick story from yesterday. I was in a store, and and this is one of those stores that, well, it could easily cover probably a football field. And I was walking around in there and kept passing this elderly couple that were pushing a a, shopping cart around. And every time I passed them, they were complaining about something. Either the store never had some item in stock, or they didn't carry this particular brand or color, and... And I passed them uh, literally probably, oh, five to eight times while I was in there shopping. Now, keep in mind, again, this is no small store. So they had to be doing some serious walking around in there. And, of course, as fate would have it, they ended up right in front of me in the checkout line. Of course, they were still complaining about how every time they came in this store, something was not right. And I, I was just standing there, and I thought, why in the world would you come back in here if it is so bad? Um, I mean, are you crazy? Or are you a couple of masochists? What? It was like they, they weren't happy unless they were complaining. So I'm walking out the door, and I'm a little bit behind them, and they get into a truck with a disability license plate parked in the handicapped space right in the very front of the store. Now, this is the same couple that had just walked around for at least 30 minutes in this store. They were walking, and it did not seem to be bothering either one of them. They get into a truck with a disability plate. I know you have seen this just as much as I have. There is nothing wrong with these people other than they want something for nothing. 
I'm sure if they are so-called disabled, they are probably also getting a check from the government containing my tax money. This, this is why we're in trouble with this country. There's too many people that don't care to take money from other hardworking people. And it just really makes me mad and, and drives me absolutely crazy when I see that sort of thing. I think it's just ripe with abuse right now, just more so than in the past. Maybe it's because partly because of the economy. Maybe it's because, um, you know, they, they're just looking for an easy time nowadays. That's a little bit more out there than it used to be. But whatever it is, it, it can't be because their parents taught them this because this was an elderly couple. So their parents had to have grown up when teaching working for yourself and and making your own way was is what you taught your kids and i would think with the, at the age this couple was they would have also been teaching their kids this as well now kind of nowadays that isn't taught so much but i would think they would be from the generation when that would have been taught unfortunately i think w what happens is we have this really creeping type of socialism that's starting to well not starting to infect but it's already infecting a large part of our population that years and years ago they wouldn't have even considered taking money without uh, you know from their neighbors which is what you're doing if you're if you're on government aid that's where the money's coming from it's not coming from uh, the government because the government can't you know they don't sell anything they have no way to make money what they do is they take money from someone else and give it to you if i did that it would be called stealing or theft it, you know if i take money from you at a point of a gun it doesn't really matter what i'm going to do with it the fact that i did it is the the part that uh, that's against the law so anyway we're coming up on the bottom of the hour here boy the, this hour goes by quick so we will be back after the bottom of the hour break, we'll have, um, oh, we got a couple of things to get to. We might get to Scott Walker a little bit and, and some more information about the government uh, ruining your life and society. So <laughs> we'll see you after the break. This is Patrick Riggins with the Patrick Riggins Show.